Good morning, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and distinguished guests. AIDS, unemployment, betrayal, cancer. Those are powerful words that can make people shiver. A few weeks ago, our theme of the day was the power of language. And there are words that make us happy or make us sad or make us scared. To me, the scariest of all words is maybe. Uncertainty to me is very challenging. I need to know, I need to feel secure, I need to feel that I have control. And just the thought that I don't have that makes me afraid. This morning, I didn't hear the alarm ringing. And when I woke up, it was half an hour later than what I was supposed to rise. And that fear started sitting because I knew I had to be here on time and you never know what the traffic is going to look like. I live by Metro Zoo. So coming here is a challenge, and I know the spots in Palmero that get really heavy. I took a deep breath <laughs> and tried to deal with uncertainty the best way I could, which was praying. I was praying God to open the ways and not to let me suffer uncertainty on my way. He listened. It was amazing. Every time I was going to get to the point that I knew it was congested, it was clear. I was here 50 minutes before. Uh, the meeting started, which is usually the time that I'm here by, and I was very grateful for that. As you know, uncertainty is part of life, and we need to learn how to deal with that. I know I'm not the only control freak, and how I know it? Because we live in a society that strives for preparedness, rewards, <coughs> forecasts, and it's always looking for control. We live in a society that hopes that life's run as a whale oil machine, but life is not like that. We all know that a few years ago a recession hit and the mighty American was shaking. I had a conversation with a Mexican friend and she told me, I don't know why Americans are so afraid. I don't know why they, don't, they can't sail the storm. In Mexico we live in and out of recession. And we don't sweat it. And I told her, think about it. A wealthy kid that never fries an egg, never washes their clothes, never takes the bus because he has a chauffeur and a maid, broke, he wouldn't be able to perform those simple tasks because nobody taught him. So the center of the message in my speech is that as responsible citizens and or parents, we're responsible to make our children adroit to deal with uncertainty. That should be the shape in our legacy because it's the only thing that is for sure that they're going to face uncertainty in life. But before we're able to do that, we're going to have to change some paradigms in our lives. And I'm going to give you some hints and you're going to have to make that your own thought process. For example, one of them is we need to move forward, we need to move from rewarding the result to rewarding the effort. As a parent, are you willing to reward your children's effort instead of the straight A's? There's another paradigm that we need to shift and that is stop labeling uncertainty with a, with a negative association and see the positive connotations of it. Start seeing unknown, unknowing things like lacking structure, stop seeing it as ugly, and start seeing uncertainty as the source of innovation, the source of ideas, welcoming it instead of 
fearing it. But that's something that we're going to need to do before we can give that to our children. Another shift that we're going to need to do is stop hoarding. When we hoard, we're saying we don't trust the future. The future is not going to bring me what I need. If you stop collecting stuff and just trust that whatever you need in the future is going to be there, you're going to be giving an example to your children that it's okay to trust the future. <clears throat> it is okay to prepare. It's okay to do all the forecasts and everything that we do in this society. It's just that we need to invest the same resources in learning how to deal with uncertainty. The last shift that I'm going to talk about, which I think is the most important, is we need to start thinking that it's better to learn how to adapt than learning or mastering a trade. We need to understand that if we are capable or dealing with the situations that are in front of us, we're going to be more self-confident and less anxious about what is going to happen. And that is the reason why I have this beautiful flower here. I'm going to give you. Some, I'm going to read some facts about an orchid, and you're going to understand why. This beautiful plant cohabited the earth with dinosaurs. The dinosaurs are not here. They are. Okay. There are thirty thousand species of orchids worldwide. They are beautiful. They are ectopic. They are. They have beautiful colors. The fragrance is amazing, but what really sets them apart is their ability to adapt to a changing world around them. And that's why they are here and the dinosaurs are not, because they were able to adapt to the circumstances of the earth every time it changed. To me, an orchid is the poster child of adaptation. I hope every time you see it, you remember that. Thank you. Mr. Tosis.